Good day, all. I wrap Stephen of Linden Associates with your Spider ETF wrap up, your weekend edition for this Sunday, June 27th, 2021. All right, my friends, you know, we're looking at markets continuing to make their highs. We've had some of this going on with the infrastructure. I know what I heard on Thursday when the announcement was made and the president clearly said he's behind this bill. Then I heard him definitely say that uh, he won't sign that bill unless there is a budget bill and unless that he gets that other relief bill that he's looking for for elderly health care and the like. Well, that's changed a little bit. Now he's backtracking and saying, no, 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 that's not it. Well, I know what I heard. It doesn't matter what we heard. If the president is saying he'll sign the infrastructure bill regardless, that is great. I think the country wants that. Can they get the reconciliation bill through uh, the Senate? Probably if all the uh, Democrats vote for it. You know, the Republicans probably won't, but if they get that done, and with uh, Ms. Harris, they, the VP, they get that done. So the onus is on them. That's my interpretation of what I'm seeing. As for the budget, that's the typical fights that you get between the parties. Now, if we take a look at ARC, this has been a comeback story, and I'm, I was watching Barron's and all the others that are covering this over the weekend, and you can see you're up. I'm looking for pretty stiff resistance to hit the market. Now, if we take a look at the Bollinger Band, it's dropping, as you can see, about eight points there, eight points there. This market's going to be right very, very close to where it's at right now. I'm looking for the pros to take money off the table the first hit of that upper Bollinger Band trend is up. When we go to the tech sector, look at how this is run, and these are new highs for the whole move. So the market consolidated, it's a breakout to the upside. You've got a pattern of higher lows, higher highs, that is a swing line low. You're over the 18 week average of closes, that is the number the market fought the battle at. You can see that, I think crystal clear. It resolved itself, not here or here, this is where it resolved itself. And it really did it this week, why? Outside week up. When you get that, unless you take out that week's low, you're looking for further, a further move to the upside. That would have been this target right here, and that's pretty much what the market did, and then it decided to get through that uh, this past Friday. Can it keep going? Well, where's the Bollinger Band? The answer is yes. Right now, that's 147.45, and that too is lifting up about let's call it a, a, a dollar at a time. So it's probably closer to 148.50, something in that general zone. But that's what I'd look for. And because you're not with an embedded reading, that's where I think the resistance will come into the market and pros will take money off the table. This could go either way on PAVE. It's, it's got to be doing what I am, listening to everything. You made about, oh, this is a weekly chart, so we're back into the month of May when you made your high. You've corrected down. We knew that there was the G7, G20 summits, all that going on. The president would come back and deal with what he had to. I don't see this market wanting to give up very much if the president, and if the, it turns out that by Monday, the market is still interpreting that the infrastructure agreement, if it can pass the Senate, the president would sign it. I don't know that that's the case. It's, again, back and forth. And the industrial sector spider, you fell back to the 18-week average of closes. The market is working off. It still is overbought. You have to have both numbers under 70 to not be overbought the way that I teach slow stochastics. When I look at the energy sector, boy, what a tear this has been on. Higher lows, higher highs. Now, while the futures market's making new highs, you haven't gotten up here on this. I look for the resistance 56.82 to 57.26. Uh, overbought, I'm not seeing new buying coming in with an overbought reading. SPY, still fully embedded. Now this chart did something interesting. Let me show you. This is an outside week down, and that took place on last Friday for the week. That's how we ended up. When you take out the high of an outside week down, my rule, it's mine, I don't know that anybody else has it, is that triggers another wave to the upside that should culminate ideally at the upper Bollinger Band, and I'm wrong in my thinking. 
if the market takes out the low of the week before. So I think the pros went long, stopped 414.69, one tick under this low, looking for the higher part, plus they have the embedded reading. We'll see if I'm right or wrong this week, but that's pretty much how I teach that. In the emerging market ETF, nah, you lost the embedded reading. I'm not saying you have to get back to the 18 week average of closes. You've made your run to it. Ideally, you go to it. Uh, what's the pattern? Still with higher lows, higher highs, but you're still terribly overbought. So I don't see the new money coming in to buy that. In the gold market, this could get ugly if prices get under 164.87. That would give you lower highs, lower lows, and potentially set up a challenge of the 100-day average. But at that point, you'd have the swing line down, the bias is already down, and momentum down. That would be ugly. So the onus is on the bull to do what? Get this market up and not let it get through there if they're trying to keep an uptrend. The same thing is in the gold miners. While you have the higher lows, higher highs, you already have the momentum pointing down, the bias is down. If you take out here, 34.10, I'm looking quickly at 33.19, potentially even lower. So if that happens, you can't, it won't be easy to return to an uptrend for a while uh, in terms of chart action. In AMC, well, one, two, three, four, and on the fifth week, back under the uh, Bollinger Band. Futures markets typically don't go beyond five. I, I, I'm watching stocks and the number's more common to seven than it is five from what I've been watching. But you're in an uptrend, it's a pullback, it's not an embedded reading, you can get more of a correction here. And what is the real pattern? Higher lows, lower highs. So you've begun a consolidation period. TLT, on the first challenge of the upper Bollinger Band last week, I think the pros came out. Now, have we gotten to the point where with what the Fed's doing, what the market's looking at, are, is the curve yield getting to that point where instead of the back end climbing with rates, now everything's sort of evening up at this point? There's just so much unknowns. What's the Fed going to do or not do? Where are they headed? I don't think we get a better idea until we see the new jobs data that comes out. And that could be, I don't know if it's this week or next week. I have a feeling it's right at the end of this week. I'll check on that with my daily updates for you. But that, I think, is the next nail in the coffin. If it's still not good numbers, how are you expecting the Fed at the Jackson Hole meeting to suddenly turn around? They do have two more uh, jobs numbers, but I think the pattern will have been set that they're not going to explode on you. In FXE, you have a higher high and a lower low. So you're in a bit of a correction in this market right now. I see that. And you can see how the market's drifting back here. DBA, which is the agriculture fund, where you've got lower highs, lower lows, backing off in that. The trend turned down. And if you've watched what's going on in ag, that has been the case. Now, be careful with this. What do I mean by that? The rain that we've been getting is so extreme in the Midwest that they closed down highways in Chicago yesterday. You just couldn't get through them. Underpasses flooded out. My house rarely gets a water issue, uh, and yet we had one, not from the leaks in the house, but the street sewers couldn't handle the amount of water. The sewer covers were blowing off in different parts of the city as the pressure was building. That gives you an idea how much extreme water we were getting. Now, it's not raining today, but we have five days of more rain. Did we see flooding in the low-lying areas of the grains? That's what the market will look for tomorrow, and that will drive it, and that will impact that market. That's my news, so you're pretty well covered there. I know that a lot of you trade futures and ETFs. Now, let me explain what I do with a combo. At 5.40 in the morning, I come out and I start recording my futures. I do those, and they're typically published before 6.30 in the morning, and I'm covering about 40 charts with the news of the day first, and then reviewing on a daily basis everything, and then on the weekends, the weekend basis, which is weekly charts. I back it up with at 8.40, I start recording my ETF video. 
What's the difference? Well, the difference is stocks don't trade 23 hours a day, not, not for the exchange feeds and so on. They'll start at 830. By then, they've looked in many cases at what? You know that they're based, many of these spiders and ETFs are based on what the futures are doing. So I get to see the government reports. I updated for the spider ETF for the people that are trading that. There's not 34, we're up to about 41 charts. We'll fix that, but we've been so busy on getting our What's Up Live webinar going, uh, and that's every Wednesday now, that that took our time. We're back on top of all this. So to make a long story short, I think the combination, if you trade futures or just spiders, you want to know what those futures are doing. So it's one way to look at the market. For $16.90 to start a month, and you're not, there's no contract with us, um, you're going to get 12 videos a week, six on futures, six on the spiders, each about 20 minutes long. That's a heck of a lot of information, but the goal here is to let you see all the charts. We feed into it. I'm very specific. I want you to buy here. I want you to sell there. I don't talk the generic way you're seeing in this. This is what I think you should be doing, and I'm quite aggressive. So if you're that kind of trader and like to see it, just go to our website under the keyword research. You will see the spider ETF combo there. Read about it. You can see a small video on it. Sign up there. I'm I Rapstein. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all tomorrow, my, my subscribers, first thing in the morning and the rest of you in the afternoon with our market.